Hello, my name is Sepi Amin Hanjani. I'm a neurosurgeon at University of Illinois at Chicago. It's my pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Joseph Broderick. He's the lead uh, PI for the Familial Intracranial Aneurysm Study. And will be speaking with us today about uh, uh, research that he'll be presenting uh, from that study. Dr. Broderick? Hi, Sepi. So um, what we did is we've been doing a large study that involved actually collaborators from around the world, United States, Canada, Australia, and Netherlands and Finland. And our goal was to identify parts of the gene that were related to an increased risk of developing an intracranial aneurysm. And as, as aneurysms in general, of all the different types of stroke, probably have the strongest evidence in terms of a genetic cause. There's some um, types of diseases that give aneurysms and they're inherited in a, in a, in a dominant fashion or a Mendelian fashion. But what we were looking for are genes that there was a small increase in risk, but you would need a lot of people, thousands of people with aneurysms and thousands of people without aneurysms to identify these areas that increase your risk a little bit, but still significantly. There has been a number of studies called genome-wide association studies, which have involved, again, thousands of cases of, of patients with inter intracranial aneurysm and thousands of controls, and they've identified places on the genome that are associated with this risk. The most important one is, and the most, I would say, convincing one is a place on chromosome 9, which turns out is also related to large vessel ischemic stroke, so two types of strokes related to the same area. And what we were doing is doing a, another study to see if there was another location. And so what we found was that there's an area on chromosome 7 that was associated with an increased risk of intracranial aneurysm. And then what we did is, when you find something like that, because you're comparing a lots and lots and lots of places on the genome, you have to replicate it. So what we did is we looked to our colleagues in the Netherlands and, the fin and, and Finland, and we looked at the spots on the genome that we found, and then we replicated those in the, those populations. And what we found, again, was an area that we think is related to intracranial aneurysm. Now, very interestingly, this same region has already very close to been identified with the risk of ischemic stroke and large vessels ischemic stroke. So, it sounds like we're hearing maybe a potential common theme that this gene area that puts you at risk for vessel disease related to an aneurysm, a bulging of the artery, is also maybe related in some other patients for some other reasons to blockages in those large arteries as well. So we think this is maybe a theme we will see more of, um, but it's something that we also are going to be doing a lot of additional type of science to understand why that gene region causes this issue, what's the difference in the protein, what the gene that may be involved with the regulation of genes. So it's a lot of work to do. But one advantage of this uh, type of analysis is that if we can identify those patients who carry these small areas that increase the risk, we hope that we can convince them even more to stop smoking, to control their blood pressure, which are the two most important risk factors for developing inter intracranial aneurysms. Can you tell us a little bit about where you see the future of this research going uh, in the next couple of years as far as identifying those functions that you were talking about of that area of the So genome? there's a couple things. One is we're also doing studies where we do what's called exome sequencing. So whereas these are like a lot of little signposts across the whole genome, we can actually now by technology look at every single location, every little base pair along the place of the gene that codes the protein. And so we can find additional regions. Once we find those, what you can do is you can use animal models sometimes where you knock out a gene and then you can see what happens to the blood vessels in those animal models. One example is a zebrafish model. Another way is you can take cells and you can put the mutated or the bad gene into the cells and see how well other, um, um, other genes and proteins are formed and function in the cells. But it's, it's tough. It's, it's tough. It's hard going because unlike cancer where you, get a, you can get a piece of the tissue, getting a piece of the tissue inside your head with an aneurysm is not an easy thing to do. So that's limited us. 
And when you found that, uh, you mentioned that risk factor modification could be, you know, targeted to folks if they've discovered to have uh, the genetic predisposition, so to speak. Uh, do you imagine that this could lead to therapies that are drug-based in the future and it's, would would limit formation of aneurysms? It's possible um, for certain type of genes where the gene is really, really misfunctioning, you know, and it's not working at all. That would be something that would probably run in a family um, and maybe four or five people affected. That may be more accessible to a gene therapy. For these, for these genes where the risk is a little bit increased, you know, every gene has a good function to it, and if it's, it, we may want to be more targeting getting rid of the environmental factors that increase mm -hmm. the risk. For example, we do know from with chromosome 9, if you have that gene mutation and your smoke, you multiply your risk. So while you can't maybe get rid of the risk, you can certainly diminish it substantially if you can stop smoking. And that is by far the most important risk factor for um, aneurysms. Mm -hmm. And it's equivalent actually to the risk you find with lung cancer. It's mm -hmm. that strong. So that's one message we always try to give to our patients when we do these gene studies. Okay. And lastly, I wonder if you feel this would have implications potentially for screening in the future. I, I think so. You know, it, if we get a better idea of the genes at risk and you maybe personalized medicine, you come up and you say, oh, you know, I, I have some things that make me more likely to develop an aneurysm. Well, first of all, I would stop smoking. But even that, if I had something in my family that was there, I may want to go and get screened to make sure I don't have an aneurysm in the brain that's already developed because of my genetic background. And then how to manage those is another issue and a bigger one. Of course. Thank you, Dr. Broder. Thank you.